Hi everyone! Welcome back to the channel here at Paradise on Pennies. Uh, I'm Heather and today I'm going to talk a little bit about cell coverage when you live on the road in a nomadic lifestyle. Uh, if you're new to this channel, the reason I'm talking about this particular topic is because we live on the road full time. Uh, it's two of us, my husband and I, and our three rescue dogs. We now live in a truck camper. Before that, we actually lived in a Ford Escape, a converted SUV, for several years. Um, and then, since we decided to do this full-time, we decided to that our next uh, home on wheels would be a truck camper. So the whole story is here on the channel. If you want to follow along with that, you can just check out some of the videos and you'll get the whole picture of what we're about. <clears throat> One of our biggest things is actually living this way to be, well, we live on a budget, so we do things very cheap. So as opposed to maybe some other people that might live on the road and travel, um, ours is restricted to a specific budget. And so we share that with everyone so that you guys can get a better idea of how you can do it if you're not a millionaire, if you don't have a lot of money to spend on travel, but you still want this lifestyle because there are a lot of rewards to this lifestyle. Also something we talk about a lot on the channel. <clears throat> Everything from just our health and well-being, how we feel, happiness, uh, positive sides for relationships and authenticity, and it's good for the dogs, and we get a lot of exercise, we get to do the things we love, particularly in the outdoors, if you love outdoors and hiking, this is a lifestyle for that. But anyway, you can get all that by just checking out other videos here. Today, I want to talk about cell phone coverage. And I have to say, this actually is somewhat motivated by um, one of the followers here on the channel. And we've asked you guys several times to ask us any questions you have. And please do so. I'm sorry if we take a little while to get to them. Um, again, we legit live this way, so we're off grid a lot. And so we might not get to something for a little while. Or in this case, I actually kind of buried this in my notes and somehow lost it. So sorry if you're watching. I did take your question and I did intend to uh, follow up on it, but it kind of got lost in the shuffle of my notes. But today I'm covering it. So cell phone coverage for the nomadic traveler. <clears throat> so for us, the first question is, well, how often are we in service or how often do we need to be in service? Well, we do go off the beaten path a lot. So those of you that do follow us, you know, one of our biggest things is being off the beaten path pretty much away from people, having our own quiet time and space. And that takes us to places where you wouldn't expect to get a lot of cell phone coverage. I mean, these are definitely the, the way out there spots. But it's not as spotty as you would think. Nowadays, there's coverage. It's, it's rather ubiquitous. There's a lot of cell coverage everywhere. And so you'll find yourself in the middle of nowhere and find cell service. So it's pretty easy actually to find service even when we're in the middle of nowhere. So that doesn't necessarily get in the way of us having cell coverage. One thing to take note, you're not just going to always be without it. Um, and we also can find it in a lot of these spots if you know kind of where to go. And one of the easiest things to do is pretty much climb up to the top of the highest nearest mountain. It doesn't have to always be the highest, but climb up to the mountain. And once you get towards mountaintops or hilltops, a lot of times you'll find cell coverage. And that's what we often do. So, we, so a lot of times, more often than not, when we upload a video to YouTube, uh, you guys know that we are probably on a mountaintop somewhere uploading it. So we're still at camp. So we don't have to go into town to do all that. Um, and like I said, there's wide coverage in a lot of spots. I mean, there's coverage available in places like Death Valley where you really wouldn't expect it. It's spotty, of course. And when you're in forested regions and some of the hilly mountainous regions, particularly in the Pacific Northwest, it can also get pretty spotty and you can find spots where you can, you just can't find service. Again, top of the mountain helps there. Um, but that's kind of the, I guess, overview of what we do for coverage. Now, we do also have to go into town, of course, periodically to fuel up. Food, fuel, whatever we need. Uh, so that'll bring us into town. And so if you don't need it every day, that's also something to consider. 
is that you'll just be off grid for a very long time. And then you'll just go into town and take care of what you need to while you're in town and then go back out. And we do that a lot too. I mean, we'll be out typically for probably durations of like one to four weeks is, is most uh, for us to be totally out there off grid. And that just depends on time of year and everything. Because uh, as a reminder, I do work online. Therefore, I do need service um, fairly often when I am on a job. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, since we can find it out in the middle of nowhere, I can get my stuff done. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, yeah, so if if you are considering this if you're thinking of living on the road and you're trying to to consider how cell coverage will come into play with your lifestyle i would just say just know that you're probably going to find more coverage than you think if you like to hike you can find coverage definitely in some really cool spots <laughs> and then yeah if you want to be on a work call or something you can show everyone this really cool view that you're at or maybe you don't want to show them that <laughs> make them jealous um, but yeah, you will find more coverage than you think. And you obviously will have to go to town sometimes. So if you don't need it every day, you can do that. But also a consideration is what kind of device do you need to do your work? So when we first started off, I have a laptop and I used to have to go into places. So we would go into say a coffee shop or somewhere with Wi-Fi, go to a park, go to a library, <clears throat> maybe sneak into a Starbucks and try to get a little bit of work done on the laptop when I needed it to be on the device. And that was a little frustrating because that tied us to the town more. So the whole, this whole lifestyle for us is about how to untether right to, to town. Um, so in the process, I've slowly worked myself to where I can actually do all my work on a mobile device, my little phone. Uh, that's huge. So if you can, if you work remotely, if you can work remotely, if you can find a job where you can work remotely <clears throat> and you only need Wi-Fi, um, you can do it that way in town. But if you can do it just on your phone service, then you can do it from anywhere and it really opens up your options. So that's my recommendation. If you're considering jobs, I'll talk in another video about jobs on the road. Uh, but if you have that opportunity, then yeah, see if you can get everything on your mobile device and then you can work off your cell coverage rather than having to find a spot in town. That'll save you, especially if you want to be off grid and you know, away from people like us. Okay. So that's the tip. And <clears throat> that's what I've done. I've gotten to the point now where all of my work can, if I want to, sometimes it's a little cumbersome, but it can be done all on the mobile device. So I'm never without, as long as I can climb to a mountain, find service. I'm good. Okay. So that's kind of how we deal with cell coverage. Now, the next question is, um, since we are out of service pretty often, uh, the picture I just painted is obviously we have durations where we will be in pockets without service. So I know a lot of people can get concerned about this because our cell phones now represent some form of safety. And, you know, you can always reach out to someone or call for help. So that's really great. And... There's always, there's always that advantage, of course, in having the cell coverage and being able to feel that level of safety. But unfortunately, with this lifestyle, there's going to be times where, if you do want to be off grid, where you will be without it. And I, all I can say is, it's just a risk of living this way. And there are so many advantages of this lifestyle that I would say it kind of outweighs that risk. So, yeah, and I mean, part of the advantages are it's actually really nice sometimes to just be out there in the middle of nowhere and have those moments where you just don't have cell coverage at all, and it kind of forces you to just find something else to do. <laughs> you just don't have the access, and it, it allows, for me, it allows my brain to not worry about anything else because there's nothing else I can do. And so it's a good practice for us is to find those times where you, you just don't have it. Because if you even can possibly have it, your brain might be thinking, mm, maybe I should take care of this. Or maybe I should do that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to not have it sometimes. I will say that. Um, no temptation, no burden. 
along with the, that cell coverage. <laughs> so get yourself out there sometimes without it. Uh, let's see. So up to this point, we've never had an incident so far. Luckily, things can happen. But we actually haven't had an incident happen where we were like, oh, man, I wish we had cell coverage. We've had times when we were in ske on sketchy roads and something could have happened. It would be nice to have cell coverage. Those are always, always the spots you do not have cell coverage, I promise, are the spots when it's sketchy. Um, we could get hurt hiking uh, or something like that. It hasn't happened. Would be nice to have coverage, but again, like I said, it's just the risk of this. And there are some options out there. There are like GPS trackers, um, devices you can get, and there's help buttons on them. I'm aware of those. I know some people who do the through hikes will use those. Um, that's great. They are a little pricey for our budget, and I think you have to have a subscription with it too to have that safety feature. Um, so it's, it's, it's not in our budget at this point, but that is an option for some of you who might be concerned. You might want to look into those um, GPS tracker devices with the safety help buttons. Uh, a lot of avid hikers use those and it might be a good option for you if you, if it's in your budget. Um, <clears throat> we also keep a map of places. In our case, we keep a map of places and we usually write down a lot of features like where it's at and then is there water there? Because water's a big concern for us. Is there uh, food we could forage there? Because that's a really good thing to know. And is there cell coverage there? If we find it, we'll kind of write where it is. It's not always at camp. Again, sometimes we have to hike up a mountain or something. Um, but if it's in the vicinity, it's reachable, then we'll just kind of jot that down and we're keeping a log and a map of that. So that's really good for us. And so when we travel to different areas, we can look at the radius around where we are and say, okay, if I need coverage this week, then we'll just go to that spot and I'll be able to do my work. So that's a really nice feature for us. Um, so might be something you want to take away too is when you start, we didn't, we didn't do this when we first started and we wish we had. So when you start traveling around, you might want to start keeping some sort of a log of different regions and what they have for you. Because we always, we also write things down like the rock hounding capabilities because we love rock hounding and wildlife we've seen there. So it's kind of a cool record to have regardless. Um, let's see. Uh, so that kind of covers the bulk of the, the considerations with cell service. So I guess in conclusion, for those of you that want to use this as a resource, how will cell coverage come into your road life plans. Uh, really, it won't if you're going to be in town a lot. If you plan to be off-grid like us and kind of out, out there, um, it certainly might. You want to take that in consideration and just do some of the tips that I said. Um, there are resources out there. Uh, you could do, I know people do a lot for their internet. There's hotspots, there's satellite internet. I don't know what's available for the traveler in that area because I haven't looked into it. I'm just aware of it. I know from us wanting to live off grid that we looked into internet and satellite was a big one there. There may be features for the mobile dweller as well. Um, those are not considerations for us. They are pretty expensive. It's just not worth it for us, especially since I can do everything on my mobile device. Um, so yeah, just know that those are probably going to be expensive options and may or may not be worth it, but they are available. If you need to use it for your job, then maybe it's worth it. Um, another thing to consider is to, if you do need to be in town, think about weekends versus weekdays. If you can do your work on the weekends and be in town on the weekends, then you'll be able to be out in the middle of nowhere on the weekdays. And that would be very advantageous if that's an option with your job. Um, because, why? Because it's much quieter on weekdays in uh, camping spots, especially on the fringes if you're close. But even within, people drive in on, say, four-wheelers and stuff too. So you'll get a lot more noise, a lot more traffic on weekends at your camp spot. So if you can do it on the weekdays, you kind of flip the normal cycle of you go play on the weekday and work on the weekend. That's a really good tip. Um, there are resources for cell coverage. I, I don't know how good this source works, but I've come across it a couple times and referenced it. I think it's called like cellularmaps.com. They do post some information about like where the nearest tower is and what kind of coverage you can expect in regions. Uh, you might want to check that out. It may be helpful. 
Uh, we also will probably talk and discuss uh, regions that we find that are good for that. And if you have any specific questions about regions, feel free to reach out to us. You can write here on YouTube. Um, we also have a contact form on the website that you can write to. So if you have a specific question, feel free. We'll let you know what we think. If we've been to the region, um, we can give you some tips and advice. So on, on that note, that's kind of the cell coverage picture here. Um, and I have one last funny story regarding cell coverage at the spot we're at right now. Um, we're camping in the Southwest desert and there is, it's pretty funny. There is a specific location out here on a specific mountain or knoll <laughs> that has a specific rock that on which has a specific spot on the rock that gets cell coverage. <laughs> Crazy that we found it. Um, Ramsey was actually just taking the phone around looking for coverage up there. We went up the mountain. We're like, oh, no, no. And he actually sat it down. We had service. And then we tested it a couple times. And, yeah, only when it's on that spot does it get covered. So pretty funny, pretty wild. Um, but that's how I uploaded this video today was by putting the phone on that specific spot. It'd be pretty hard to find just by anyone. But, hey, it's going in our logbook for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. That's how we get coverage, even though we are off grid pretty often. So considerations for you guys, it's doable. It's not impossible. Just need to take a few things into consideration from the start. I hope this was helpful today, guys. Um, if you have any other related questions or anything else for us, uh, feel free. Leave the comments. We, I promise I'll put them in my notebook and we will get to answering your question as soon as possible. Um, those of you out there might also be wondering, how do we stay charged with all of this? How do we keep our stuff charged? And you might look at our setup and see no extensive solar panel battery system. So how do we keep our stuff charged? Uh, we talk about this a lot here on the channel and how we do everything simplistically so that those of you who want to do it on a budget, it is totally possible. I promise you, look at our videos. We give you information about the budget and we give you information about some of the products or gear that really is worth it because we don't buy a lot of stuff. So the few things we do are worth it. And one of those is actually our solar setup. So check that out. I will put some links below. Might be a link popping up here, but I'll also stick the links below and I'll let you know what we do and how we stay charged and what our super, super budget solar setup is for us, especially if you can do what I just said and do most of yourself, uh, most of your stuff on a cell phone maybe even a laptop, and you can still keep yourself charged without a very expensive, extensive setup. So check that out. And again, if you have questions, leave them, and we will get to them as soon as possible. Thanks, guys. I hope this was helpful. See you next time.